and Lord of Lords. I'm going to give you one more chance. Are you ready? This is for Jesus.
I thank God for this day because at the 10th of this month is the 80th year of my, my anniversary in salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I repair the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I know we're doing quick hallelujah praises, but I just thank God because I know him as a healer. Yes. I know him as a deliverer, as a provider, as a way maker. Uh -huh. And I just thank God for that. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes.
for the wonderful rich testimony with his power, power, wonder working power in your blood. We thank you for the answered prayers. We thank you for salvation that's full and free. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for you being real in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we come to you at this time looking at your holy word. We don't just want to hear it, but we want to believe it. We want to obey it. We want to do it, Lord, because that is the only thing that we can hold on to in these last and evil days. We can't hold on to the government. We can't hold on to our money. We can't hold on to material possessions or man's wisdom. All we have is the power of the Almighty God. That same power that spoke into nothingness and created everything. That same power that looked at darkness and spoke light into existence. That same power that thought of us before the foundation of the world. We bow ourselves to your power right now because we live and move. It is because of you. Lord, all that we have, our heart that beats, hallelujah, is because of you. And so, Lord, we want to hear from you today. We pray that you would break up any fallow ground. We pray that you bind the work of the enemy. We pray, Lord, that you loose those that are captive. Lord, we pray for the recovering of sight to the blind. Lord, we pray for supernatural demonstration of your spirit. You said that we shall not live by bread alone, but by every single word that comes from the mouth of God. Don't speak, O oh God, out of my mouth of myself. But speak for you, Jesus. Not my opinion, but your word, Jesus. Not my ideologies or preferences, but your word and your word alone. For it is your word that stands, hallelujah, when everything else fails. Lord, if someone doesn't know you like they should, let today be the day in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. If someone has not repented of their sins, Lord, convict their heart today. If someone has not gone down in water for the remission of their sins, give them a mind today. If someone has not received the gift of the Holy Ghost, help them to stretch forward today to receive, oh God, that wonderful gift, that seal, that down payment, that guarantee, that promise that you said belongs to many that are far off. Break unbelief, oh God, break doubt. Lord, break it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I come against the work of the enemy. I bind you, Satan. I bind sin right now. And for these moments, let the word get in the heart. Let the word get in the mind, Lord, and saturate, Lord, every part of our being for your glory, Lord. Now some just come to come, Lord, but interrupt them, Lord. Move upon them as you've never moved before. Ride them until they come to the fullness of this great salvation according to your word. And the name, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Let everyone say amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. We give honor to Jesus Christ, who is a great God who is a great king. Amen. And we are grateful to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Grateful to see so many of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I give honor to Jesus. I give honor to our deacons, to our mothers, to our saints, to our friends. We are just privileged to look upon your face and smile one more time. Everybody didn't make it between last Sunday and this Sunday, but we're still here. Amen. And I'm especially privileged and honored that Brother Lewis is back in now. Look at Brother Lewis. Raise your hand. Amen. Yeah. Brother Lewis. Amen. And I, I believe our diocese.
meeting, that's when we're a part of an international organization. We have hundreds of churches all over the world, really. And in this northeast region, we get together, a few churches, we got together in, I believe it was March, March? April. April. And the coordinator of the diocese, Mother Ingrid Harper, she coordinated the service, and she wanted to know the person in every church that had invited the most people during that period of time. And at that particular time, I won't believe Brother Lewis was able to be at the service. Brother Lewis, I just want you to know that I've been holding this in my office for you since April. I said, oh, well, maybe I can give it to the person who won second place. He said, no, hold on, because you're going to see him again. So Brother Lewis Gonzalez Jr., would you come up here? Yeah! Woo! to know that no matter where you go, no matter what you do, God loves you. Yes. And nothing can separate that. That's right. So Brother Lewis, this is from the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, the Massachusetts Western and Rhode Island Diocese. It's presented to Brother Lewis A. Gonzalez Jr. for dedication to evangelism. Yes. Congratulations. Amen. Congratulations. <laughs> And it's so good to see you. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, God bless you, sir. Amen. Yeah. Let's give him another hand. Yeah. Amen. I don't know how many people you are. Yeah. Hurry, hurry. All right. Keep bringing people. You brought someone today with you. <laughs> you stay bringing somebody to church. That's all right. That's how you do it. That's right. Amen. God, some people just have certain gifts. Some people have the gift of connecting and influencing and he has one of those gifts. No matter what gift you have, it's been given to us for the glory and the use of God. Amen. So all the great singers in the world, wherever your favorite singer is, they were given that voice for the glory of God. Amen. Wherever you, that rapper may be, he was given that skill for the glory of God. Wherever that businessman may be, a businesswoman, they were given those abilities for the glory of God. What has God given you for his glory that you're using in his kingdom? Turn your Bibles, if you will, to John chapter number 14. John chapter number 14. We will consider verses 1 through 6. John chapter number 14. This is Jesus speaking he is talking um, about something that was very controversial at the time and it continues to be controversial today John chapter number 14 take your time make sure the person next to you sees knows where it is I just encourage people to get back to the basics, and the basics is the Bible. Amen. Thank God for good stories. Thank God for great analogies. But all that we need is in the Bible. That's why people are, they ignore the Bible and push it away. And take in God we trust off the money. Take the prayer out of the classrooms because people know that there's power in the Word of God. Verse number one in the 14th chapter of John, Jesus says, let not uh, your hearts be troubled. Number one, believe in God. And he's saying also believe in me. He says, in my father's house are many mansions or many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. But you need to understand that I go to prepare a place for you. Look at your neighbor and say, I got a place in heaven for me. Do you see that in your Bible? And he says in verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, that means that I will come again 
and I will take you to myself because I, you won't know how to get there. And that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Some people say, uh, where I am going, you know, and the way you know. And so the question is, how do I know? Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. GPS tracking hasn't been invented yet. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, listen, I am the way. He says, I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except he or she come through me. I want to take a thought there. A few weeks ago, we talked about an inconvenient salvation. Where salvation, Jesus Christ presented it to a rich person. The rich person didn't have a problem running to Jesus to get what he wanted. Didn't have a problem kneeling before Jesus, which is a sign of humility. Didn't have a problem asking Jesus for something. Today. He didn't have a whole lot of pride. But when Jesus said, don't commit adultery, don't murder, don't steal, the man said, yes, I've done all those things. And Jesus said, okay, there's one thing that you need to do. Sell everything that you have. Give it to the poor. Take up your cross and follow me. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. I can't do all of that. So that was an inconvenient salvation. Yeah. Today we want to continue with a series of inconvenience and talk about the inconvenient truth. First, we need to understand the biblical truth is that Jesus is the only way to get to heaven. The only way to get to God is by or through Jesus Christ. Yes, that means by that preposition, I believe, if there's any English folks in the house, that means on account of. So on the account of Jesus, we can get to heaven. Now this runs contrary to popular belief and to popular opinion because all roads, Oprah would tell you, lead to heaven as long as you're doing good things. So the philanthropists suggest that if I give a certain amount of money to good causes, then I'm a good person and I'll be okay with God when I die. Yeah, someone else says, find what works for you because all religious roads lead to God or something called a higher power. You know? You don't need a higher power, you need the highest power. Amen. That is Jesus Christ, God. That is the highest power that can be. And so many people search for a higher power, and the Bible is clear, there are principalities and power. And so there are variations of power, but you need the power that can only come from God himself through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So. Some say it's, 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 it's not realistic. It's too legalistic for there just to be a one way. In fact, my GPS tells me there's multiple ways to get everywhere. I want to go to this house or this restaurant. If there's traffic, I just go and find an alternative route. What we like to call a shortcut. Brothers, you know what I'm talking about. Before the maps came out, we thought we were the man. We knew how to get to a destination faster than someone else. And they say, how did you know that? Oh, it's a shortcut. Amen. But I have news for you that when it comes to this inconvenient truth, there are no shortcuts to God. There are no multiple ways to get to heaven. In fact, Isaiah, believe it, yes, Isaiah 35 and 8, he says, and a highway shall be there. Talking about the times of today. And it shall be a way Notice there's no plural there. And it shall be called the way of holiness. It shall be understand that the unclean shall not pass over it. But it shall be there for those, the wayfaring men. In other words, those who are walking on the way. 
Now, this is a powerful statement because this highway of holiness, the Bible says, Isaiah says, though fools shall not err therein. What that means is that even if you or I is considered a fool, that this way will not lead us astray. And see, holiness is a good way, good particularly for people that don't have good sense. Holiness helps keep you in alignment so you don't do anything cray-cray, you know. Holiness is a good way to live. Praise the name of our God if you have a temper. Sanctification is a good place to, hallelujah, uh, have in your life if you are given to habits like gambling or cheating or stealing or things like that. Holiness, a lot of times we think about the things that can't be done on the highway of holiness, but what about the things that the highway of holiness protects us from. Every highway has the things called guardrails. You, know, you don't get mad at the guardrail for being there as ugly as it may be messing up the view as you cross the bridge. You realize that if something were to happen, the guardrail is there to protect us from the inconvenient truth of it not being there and we falling to our demise. Yes. And so Isaiah is saying the inconvenient truth to that there is just one way. Yes. There is just one truth. And Jesus is the only way. Yes. Jesus yes. is the only truth. Yes. And Jesus is the only answer. I know we're taught that there's multiple ways to skin a cat. I know that we're taught, praise God, that in English language, one word can mean 18 different things. But Jesus is a little more like math. Two plus two is going to equal four in any continent you go to. And if anyone tells you otherwise, they are deceived by something that's not the truth that the Bible would call a false teacher with a false doctrine. So this inconvenient truth is inconvenient because the only way for Jesus to be the answer is for me to answer Jesus. And so the Bible says many are called but few are chosen. So when Jesus rings your phone and J-E-S-U-S -S pops up on the ID, I don't hit decline or hit the button to let it keep ringing so folks think I'm not at home or it's ringing and not going straight to voicemail. I have to answer the call from Jesus. I don't know when your call came. Maybe it came on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I don't know within the 24-hour day when your call came, but when Jesus calls you, it would be incumbent and advantageous for you to say, hello, Jesus, what is it that you require of me? Because the Bible tells us that our God is a conditional God. I know he loves us, and I know he cares for us, but there are conditions, hallelujah, to get to heaven. Everyone just doesn't walk up into heaven because unclean cannot live with that which is clean. Impurities, look at that ring on the finger, sister. How would you feel if it was totally impure? Your finger would be falling off right about now before it turned green. But see, what that man did for you is he bought a ring that had something pure. In other words, it was the, the, the dross was removed from the gold so it could shine like it shined. The diamond was refined to not look like charcoal like you put in your grill, but now it looks shiny and good. I know some of y'all getting sad because ain't nothing on your finger. Don't worry about it. Jesus Jehovah Shama will be your companion. Yeah, yeah. And you just seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Can the church say amen? And so the biblical truth here is that we all have to get on a holiness highway, hallelujah, that leads to straight street, that leads to the city of God. What are you talking about? Because Isaiah wrote in 35 and 8, but Jesus picked the same teaching up in Matthew 7 and 13 where he said, listen, he was talking to the people. You want to realize how to get to heaven? You have to get on straight street and not Broadway. He says, enter ye in at the 
straight gate. Notice it doesn't say gates. I'm sorry to tell Harpro Studios, there's only one gate to lead to heaven. There's only one way to lead to heaven. Yes, you can be philanthropic. And yes, you cannot cuss and not swear. Yes, you can do all the good deeds that you know to do. But the Bible says in John 3, 1 through 6, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, that person cannot even see the kingdom of God. Marvel not that you must be born again. It's good to come to church and I bless you and I pray that you keep coming, but don't just come and leave the same way you can. Leave with the power of the Holy Ghost. Leave with this inconvenient truth becoming convenient in your life. Jesus said here, for wide is the gate and broad is the way, hallelujah, that leads to destruction. In other words, you thought, hallelujah, you, you thought the Department of Transportation knew something about highways. Isaiah was talking about a highway before streets were even made, hallelujah, connecting states and countries and cities together. He said it's a highway of holiness, literally and figuratively. Let me digress for a moment. A highway. Brother, you don't have to go down to find a blessing. You stay where you are. Sister, you don't have to lower your standards to get what God has for you. It's a highway. And if anybody wants what God has for them, they gotta go a little higher. Hallelujah to the Lord. And so the writer Jesus is saying here, he said it's a broad way. And so I know every city has a broad way and a main street. He said it's a broad way, and usually Broadway is somewhere near the thank you, Holy Ghost, the center of town, because it's a street that a lot of people travel on. More people travel on Broadway than on the side streets. But you know what the side street is? It's called Straight Street. And Jesus, hallelujah, he plowed the way. I don't have a choice but to follow the way that he told me to go. And he said here, Broadway leads to destruction. That is a way of disobedience. And he said, many there be which go in. He said, because in verse 14, straight is the gate and narrow is the way. You know why it's narrow? Because we have something called our will and this flesh that wants to do whatever it wants when it wants to do it. Bless my daughter's heart. When she was little, her form of disrespect, so to speak, was I can do what I can do. So when we said, let it go do so, no, mommy, I can do what I can do. And so what she was saying is she can do whatever she has the ability to do. And we had to say, yes, sweetie, you can put your hand on that stove, but realize if you do that, it's going to create something called a consequence and most consequences are pain. So yes, you can do what you can do, but what you do may not always be good for you. So listen to a higher power that knows a little bit better and loves you. Doesn't want good things withheld from you, but wants to keep you from falling so that he can present you faultless before the presence of his glory and do it with exceeding joy. My God, my God, how can God take a sinner like me and present him in his presence with exceeding joy? Because I've responded and you've responded to the inconvenient truth that it's a narrow way when my flesh and my will wants to be disobedient. I have to have the Holy Ghost to push me down so that I can 
fit through the way. Anyone ever been too big to fit through a fence or to fit through a slider? You got to maneuver and get through that thing. Don't you realize the Holy Ghost is an anointing and it's like an ointment that when you think the way is too difficult, when you think the way is too narrow, when you think the space is too tight, somehow the Holy Ghost allows you to slide right through because it's the truth of God. Hallelujah. That can never be denied. Let the church say amen. So he says here, listen, Broadway goes to hell, but straight street leads to life. And this is hard right here. Jesus said, I didn't say it. In the 14th verse of the 7th chapter of Matthew, he said, few there be that find. It. You look around at these empty chairs. The Bible says few there be that are willing to obey God, to obey the inconvenient truth that Jesus is the only way. Listen, I can come up here and preach self-help psychology and preach pick yourself up by the bootstrap motivation and that may be good Monday morning, but when you take your last breath, that can't help you. I may be the best counselor in the world. Can get you out of every trauma that you've ever experienced. But when you close your eyes and sleep off into judgment, that can't help you. The Bible says Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. And no matter how messed up my life is, Jesus is my life. Because it's in him that I live. It's in Jesus that I move. And in Jesus I have my total being. And so you may not like how I look. You may not like how I sound. Your neighbor may not like how you smell. But when Jesus, you everything. In Jesus, you're the apple, the Bible says, of his eye. That means you're special. But it only means I've responded to this inconvenient truth. And you know why? Few people are going to get there. I didn't put it up there, but if you go to verse 15, the Bible says, beware of false prophets. Because you got liars on YouTube. You got liars on Facebook. You got liars that pervert this word and turn it into something to hurt people but the devil is a liar you can the slave masters use the bible to convert hallelujah and make people think that slavery was legal because the bible says shall slaves obey your masters but you need to understand the bible to rightly divide it it was not talking about north american transatlantic slavery it was talking about new testament slavery that was a form of indentured servitude that you used to pay off debts and slaves were often treated with love and care and sometimes even considered a part of the family. It was no justification to keep people systematically oppressed for generations and so I got news for you the Bible is still right even when it's used wrong you just gotta find a place where the truth is. Find a place where you hear a testimony that said I had a prayerless for two years. But the truth is God is answering my prayer. And then somebody else can co-sign and say, yep, me too. Because where two or three prayers are being answered, God can answer more prayers. Say, Lord, Answer my prayer. Answer my prayer. And so uh, these false, I'm a living Lord, uh, these false prophets here, uh, they're going to run around uh, and tell you that there's more than one gate. Uh, you read your Bible. Uh, there's not gates. Uh, there's not ways. Uh, there's not streets. Uh, there's not options. Uh, there aren't even religions. Uh, oh, I know that went over some of your heads. Uh, no, there's just one here. Uh, there's not many 
churches, man-made denominations. God didn't make a denomination. He said, listen, you come and follow me, my son Jesus Christ. There's technically only one denomination according to the Bible. I don't want to ruffle your feathers unless you're a chicken. The Catholics can't go to heaven. My God, my God, unless they are baptized in the name Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I bet you never heard of the Catholic Apostolic Association. Yeah, way back when, some Catholics knew how to call on the name of Jesus because they realized Mary wasn't helping them. They realized St. Paul wasn't good enough. They realized St. Peter and all the candles that they lit still didn't lit like them with the fire of the Holy Ghost to overcome sin. And so they got in a field somewhere and started calling on the name of Jesus. They put the funny book away and pulled out the Bible and read somewhere that if I repent and baptize in the name Jesus Christ for the remission of my sin, that I shall, I shall, I shall receive the power from on high let the church show yeah there's not multiple saviors there's not multiple gods don't you know Deuteronomy 6 and 4 hear O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord I believe Ephesians he picked it up and said there's one body there's one spirit there's one faith there's one baptism there's one God there's one Father. Jesus said there's one truth. There's one way. And it's easy to be distracted. Nowadays, with everything that's happening, I'm perplexed. When I look at the natural disasters, let me speak on that for a moment. These natural disasters are not just global warming. It's God, the creator of the universe. You better catch this. Uh, trying to get our attention. Uh, he's trying to get our attention. Uh, you tell me uh, how you're going to have more powerful storms uh, in a short range of time uh, than we've ever seen in the existence of the earth uh, since we've been measuring. Uh, it's not coincidence. Uh, the science says it's global warming. Uh, come on, Dow. Uh, that can explain everything. Uh, how are you going to have uh, the wild? fires when I got all the technology and the chemicals in the world and I can't stop the move of a fire. Now I hear some of you say, why would a God do this? I don't have the answer, but I want to know why. He's still letting me breathe because he's giving me time and space to run to him. You can leave here and turn on the Patriots game and act like you didn't come to church with your power. Popeye's chicken, but if you die tonight without the power of God on the inside, in hell you will lift your eyes, and that is the inconvenient truth. But the good news is, Jesus Christ, He came that I might have life, and I got life right now. But I need the abundant life. I need the eternal life. I need the life that goes beyond the grave. For the Bible tells me this mortal shall put on immortality. This corruptible with all my pimples and all my flaws shall put on incorruption. And I can look back at death. I can look back at the grave. And say I can look back at cancer. I can look back at all the writing and say I, I got the victory over death, hell, and the grave. That's the truth. That's the
the life. That's the way. Let the church say yeah. We got all the commentaries on the media outlets. It's hard to even look at the news now. Overwhelming with everybody's opinion and underwhelming with truth. But how many know that if I hold on to Jesus, that I shall know the truth. And the truth, the Bible said, shall make me free. My God, my God, only the truth can have you up here praying. Only the truth can have you praising God when you don't feel like it. Only the truth can have you preaching and teaching like a madman. Because you know that the souls of men hang in the balance. But God says, I want a just balance. I want to give you not what you deserve, but what I died for. I don't care what sin you've committed. If you're taking a breath right now, there's truth for you. There's life for you. There's hope for you. There's purpose for you. And there's power too. Let the church shout, yeah. And so all the Facebook physicians and all the Twitter therapists and all the Snapchat psychologists, praise God, and all the other social media psychiatrists and all the Instagram Instagramers that can lead to confusion, that can lead to doubt. The Lord told me, some of us got to shut that stuff down. Don't Google what the Bible says. Do I need to speak it to what did the Bible say? Do I need to be baptized? Is it really wrong to be this way or that way? What does the Bible say? Don't you know algorithms are created? That's man-made to suggest. If I Google something, who determines what comes up? You ever thought about that? If I search for something, who determines what comes up? Let God be true. If you want to search for something, search the scriptures. If you want to search for something, come to Sunday school. Come to Bible class. Come to prayer. And God will reveal the deep things that can only be revealed when you sit at his feet. The disciples got to know more than other people that weren't with Jesus because they followed him around. And so they were able to get some intimate moments that other people did not get. If you want intimate moments with Jesus, somebody said you spell love, T-I-M-E. You spend time there. You sit with him a while. My God, my God. But all those social media folks, they can't help you. I know people are running around saying a whole lot of things. But beware of false prophets. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is God. Because I and my Father are one. It's a mystery, I know. But every day, you put ice in a glass and you drink some water if you don't start. And how is the ice? The ice is H2O. The liquid is H2O. And when I boil an egg, it's still H2O when it becomes steam. You accept that in science class. So why not accept that Jesus and God and the Holy Ghost are one expressing itself depending upon its environment in different ways let the church say amen and so I'm going to let you go in about 10 preaching minutes but the reminder is that with all the noise with all the arguing with all the criticalness happening with all the bickering and the aggression we as the saints of God with all the racism and and all that just back and forth can start to get tight and start to get upset and start to get discouraged. But I want you to just let go. I think you said it. Open your hands a little bit. I know you want to knock that person out that continues to harbor, harbor ill will towards you. I 
know you want to get somebody in trouble because they've been being on your nerves. Every nerve you didn't even know you had. But the Bible says, let's, let's, let's just let go of that for a moment and let yourself hold on to God. In these last and evil days, remember that if you have Jesus, you have all you need. Somebody says he's peace. Somebody says he's love. Someone says he's joy. Someone says he's hope. Someone says he's confidence. Someone says he's boldness. Someone says he's everything. That I let him be. Let Jesus be your peacemaker in traffic. Let Jesus be your remote control when your flesh dries up. Let Jesus be your mouth when you want to say something and you hit your finger with that hammer. Let Jesus be everything in the midnight hour. Let Jesus be the tissue that you dry your tears with. Let Jesus be your everything. Oh, yeah. And hold on. Because remember, the Bible said that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. Now I know you Trinitarian will say that proves it right there. It's an expression. Don't get mad left-handed folks. It's just the Bible. Right. Biblically speaking, the right hand was a position of power. And so what that's saying to us is that Jesus is glory to God has all power oh, yeah. in his right hand. Somebody need to look up the heaven and say, Lord, oh. shut your hand. Shut your, your, your right hand. Put your Woo. right hand on me right now. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. I need a healer. I need a holy God. I need a don't give me your tutor. Don't give me your picky. Give me your right hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your hand with the power. You see, Revelation 21 and 5 says, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. You see, at the close of this Bible, in the first of the last two chapters of the Bible, you see a lot of reference to the throne of God. In Revelation 22 and 1, John wrote, The angel showed me the river of water of life didn't Jesus say and out of your belly shall you draw water from the wells of salvation didn't he just say that he was the light well John in heaven he sees the angel that shows him the river of the water of life it was bright as crystal and it was flowing from the throne of God and of the land and no longer will there be anything accursed in other words in heaven it's going to be shalom you hear that word sometimes it means more than peace it means total satisfaction it means complete commitment to God there's nothing ever there's no dust there's no speck there's nothing wrong it's a perfect utopian environment beyond human comprehension that's what shalom is and to get to shalom you gotta know who's on the throne look at your neighbor and say neighbor to get to shalom you gotta know who's on the throne my God my God and if you didn't know it's Jesus everybody looking for peace I got news for you there's not gonna be peace on earth so stop praying for peace on earth pray for peace in your home pray for peace in your neighborhood pray for peace in your job but you can't expect a person who ain't holy to live holy you can't expect I don't care how much 45 says he's a Christian if he's not walking according to the Bible and doing what the Bible said he ain't a Christian he's as good as a communist it doesn't matter the Bible says oh, yeah. let God be true and if it ain't God 
It's a lie. And when there's a lie, there's sin. And when there's sin, there's death. And when there's death, there's no peace. Well, we have a church oh, yeah, in yeah. the middle of all of this. Hallelujah. Well, God said, you're going to have some light. Well, God said, my light is going to go up. And people are going to know that someone's living right. I had a young fella email me from somewhere. He was an evangelist about 14 years old. And he said, I've been watching y'all. And you seem like you got a lot of young people. And I want to let you know that I'm a millennial. And it's good to see somebody up north still holding on. I'm encouraged because I didn't think other millennials would listen to holiness. But I'm going to keep following you because it's blessing my soul. I don't care. The Bible said no matter what size you are, no matter how much you get, the Bible said if he be lifted up, he oh, will yeah. draw. He can use social media. He can use technology. He can use my life. But somebody said, let my life be a praise unto you, Lord. I covet the praise of God over the praise of man. Man is good. But the problem is that pat on the back can turn into a knife in the back. But God his gifts, his promises are yay and amen. No matter what I do, God leaves me with the option of returning to him. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way. You gotta turn from your sin. You gotta turn from your doubt and seek the face of the almighty God that has revealed himself as Jesus Christ. And the Bible said, I will hear from heaven. But you need to understand something. Everybody quote that scripture. The context of that scripture was the prayer for the presence of God to be in the church. That was a prayer when dedicating the temple to say, God, any time someone comes on the altar and gets on their knee and pray here and cries out here and mourn here, here, here. That was a dedication for the church and the corporate prayer. You got to come to church. That's the inconvenient truth. And lift your voice oh, yeah. during prayer with the people of God oh, yeah. so that we can magnify God and create the space and create the sign for God to rain down. Someone said shower of blessing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we yeah, need yeah, yeah. mercy drops, little raindrops around me are falling. I don't want no little blessing. I don't want no droplet blessing. I don't want no miss blessing. I want shower. I want a shower. Lord, soak me. Lord, wet me. Lord, wash me. Lord, every part. Lord, drown me in my blessing. I'm going to let it alone. Yeah. But you know what? You need Thank to look you, at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor one last time. And say, neighbor. Hey. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You got to say it like you mean it. Hallelujah. Say, neighbor. Hey. Hold on. Hold on. Until you see the throne. Hallelujah. I mean, hold on. Until you see the throne. God is on the throne. And one day, you're going to see him. One day, you're going to see him just as he is. And so keep in mind the throne of God. When you want to get discouraged, tell yourself. Say, self, you got to hold on until I see 
see the throne. Don't you realize the throne is in heaven and the only way to get there is through Jesus Christ. Jesus is worth it. Heaven is worth it. I know that there's no GPS that tells us how to get there. You know the satellite doesn't get high enough to tell you where heaven is. Ways can't show you the way to heaven. Google Earth can't help you because all Google Earth knows is the earth but the God the creator before a win and a way before a what and a how before the zigzag lightning played her games across the canvas of a black sky before the thunder rolled hallelujah from the throne of God there was God because in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God but then this word through Jesus Christ became flesh and walked among us Jesus is walking down your aisle Jesus is walking down your street he said get off the way you're going and come on this highway of holiness come on over here to straight street it's narrow but it's a good way it leads to life it leads to heaven it leads to glory they can't help you with it you know why you can't find it in any map because eyes haven't seen ears haven't heard neither has it entered into the hearts of men the good thing look at your neighbor and say neighbor I got some good thing where's your good thing in heaven at the throne where's your good thing before God Almighty and so hold on to the prejudice to the racism to the brutality to the oppression to the death to the sin hold on until you see the throne if you believe it shout yeah Lord Jesus, we thank you. We have committed. We give you the glory. Exactly. What you have said. It is an inconvenient truth for some. But for others, it is the power of God unto salvation. So now, Lord, we are prepared for the opportunity for anyone to respond to what you have said. There is anyone that has not received the repentance. Pray that at this moment at this time, Lord, that you prick their heart if you have not already done it. If there is someone, Lord, that wants salvation, I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that your word would reign true of what you said is the promise. Let your word, let your word be accomplished. Any type of dialogue, any type of opinion or preference that is contrary to you, remove it from our lives. The Bible is clear, plain, and simple. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. And Jesus is the life read directly that you said we can't get to God. We can't get to that place that you're preparing for us without going through Jesus. Every opposition to that I bind in the name Lord Jesus Christ. With eyes still closed, is there anyone today that would like to repent of their sin? And all that means is you're going to from your heart express sorrow from God express the fact that you want to turn from the things that are binding you and holding you back. You may have heard or felt something in the testimony service and you didn't know what it was and why are these people acting like that? What, what is it? Is it emotionalism? I want to, I want to know what this is. I want this truth that surpasses understanding. If 
that is you, you can come right now and we'll pray with you. And we'll pray that God have mercy. We've all had to do it and we all continually do it because no man or woman is perfect. If that be you, step forward at this time. You have to express your faith by doing something. If you are here and you want to be baptized, you say, listen, I, I heard, I heard that I have to get this water in order to go to heaven. And I, I want it today. You can be baptized today.